What's up everybody, Dre back at it again with another video on Dead Matter. Today we're going to be talking about an update that just came out, but we're also probably going to talk about one of the previous updates that also came out. But before we get to that one, let's go ahead and, you know, finish this one off. So I'm going to start with Closed Alpha. We finally have light at the end of the tunnel. While we have not fully solved the issue that we are having pressed on us from the legal side, it looks like that by the start of the next week, we should be able to have things squared off. This is great news because as of today, we have all of our launch infrastructure structure in place if things continue to move forward smoothly next week as they have been then we will be initiating our launch of the closed alpha however for the sake of transparency and because we have never launched a project of this scope or scale ever before we will be doing a slow rollout it will essentially boil down to the following steps first things first because indiegogo's api does not properly report refunds to our back end which will require us to reconcile our backer data with the theirs and because of limited payment processing methods that are available to us when we will be initiating a two-week countdown you can think of this as the launch countdown for the closed alpha itself we will make another announcement when the countdown starts shortly after we initiate the indiegogo countdown we will be having our partners at nintrado Nit Nitrado? Not sure how you say that. Bring a portion of our servers online and we will start to trickle our partners into the project. They will be acting as guinea pigs and will help us identify key issues or potential problems that come up so that we can address them before launch. Just before the countdown comes to an end on Indiegogo, we will be spinning our servers up and getting ready for the floodgates to be opened. After the countdown is complete, we will start dispersing keys via looks like QI software. I'm assuming this is like their other website Website? Another website? I'll be sure to keep that tab open, I suppose. You will receive an email when this process starts. Though I do suggest you register an account ahead of time so that you can redeem your keys the moment that they become available. I believe I'm already registered, but can't really say for sure. I'll be sure to look into that. It is almost time that we are beyond excited to get this game in the hands of all of our amazing backers that have not only put their money behind the project, but also motivate us to be the best possible developers that we can be. All while showing us a great deal of patience and respect. Listen, so long as you're giving me a lot of these updates, I'm completely fine. Transparency is everything to me. I know that there was a lot of people that were actually kind of mad in the Discord, like it was actually kind of blowing up, and I could definitely understand their frustration, but so long as you keep dropping, you know, these types of updates with like GIFs and footage of, you know, the game actually being developed, and not just throwing in bot assets, you know, I can tolerate it. But anyways, I continue on to say, we are also gamers at heart, and we understand understand how much of a risky purchase any crowdfunded game can be. That is a very big reason why we are extremely excited to not only launch the closed alpha, but push updates that enable Dead Matter to fully fulfill the vision that it originally set out to achieve. We could not have done this without your support, and for this we are extremely grateful. So that they have a bunch of Q&A questions here, I'll go ahead and uh, read those out for you. What is the legal issue holding back this release? Yeah, I didn't even know that there was anything legal going on behind the scenes. I don't think they actually mentioned that or at least I haven't heard. They say here, while we have been advised not to divulge too many specifics, it is essentially a trademark dispute that required a bit of back and forth on what was okay and what was not okay, okay? We have gone out of our way to minimize this issue popping up again. Okay, that's interesting. Curious to know what the issue actually was, but maybe they had like an actual name of a soda can or something? Who knows? The next question is, isn't the closed alpha supposed to be out by the end of July? And they reply with, we made sure to deliver weekly updates to keep you guys informed without dropping any specific release dates that we knew we may not be able to hit. To be blunt, we hate it when we promise a date and cannot follow through on it. It is incredibly soul crushing for us. While the issue is nearly dealt with, we have a responsibility to make sure that the CA works. When we say that it's available, and part of that for us is a slower rollout because we simply don't have the experience on hand to just flip a switch and have everything work overnight. Yeah, I mean, this game has been delayed several times I think from what I understand we're supposed to have like a release date like I think two years ago I could be wrong somebody wants to fill me in because I know that uh, th the initial release date was a lot earlier than now looking at the old footage that I've seen about a few years ago compared to now the game just looks a lot better so delaying it was a good idea in my opinion but anyways why is there an NDA in place and they reply with NDAs on early builds of software are commonplace however content creators that are partnered with us will be given plenty of 
of opportunities to release gameplay clips and or even stream on Twitch and YouTube. My partner? I don't think I'm a partner, right? I should really check with that. Moving on to the next one here. It says, what if X feature is missing from vlog Y? I looked forward to it. And they reply with, the definition of an alpha is to feature incomplete but playable content. If something is missing, it likely had some issues or content that the system drives was not adequately developed in time for the closed alpha. In many cases, we'll introduce it via a patch during the closed alpha or let you guys know why the feature was cut out. Okay, well, so long as they let us know, I'm all right. I just want to be able to play this game, you know, get my feet in there. And then we move on to development here. It says Kyle has continued working on bug fixes for occasional crashes on dedicated servers, other miscellaneous bug fixes, implementing door barricades into player construction, and also shown last week and wrapped up implementing better water in dead matter. He's also added a mechanic that players will need to keep in mind. You need keys for vehicles unless you hotwire it, but that's a different topic. And players will need to remember to take the keys out of the ignition while leaving or getting ready to bail out of the vehicle or they risk losing them. Okay, so it seems like we can actually watch all of these gifts with actual uh, audio. Okay, so the first gift that we have here is of a dude who walks up to his door. He pulls up his radio menu. He goes to build. We saw containers, but he's obviously going for fortification here and then doors. And then he looks for a wood bar. He grabs the wood bar and he slaps it on the door. So if anybody tries to come in through that way, you're basically screwed. And it actually shows that you can actually take off the wood bar off of the door and put it off to the side. I think that's actually really cool. I think it's great for keeping people out. And then he walks outside and he comes back in and you're able to actually put that on the door so that they can't come in. Seems like you have the ability to actually take that off the door also. Wonder if you can actually save that or if it just dismantles. I didn't actually see it. Did I dismantle? Oh, it's disassemble. So you actually take that apart. Okay. Kind of sucks that you can't just like put it back in your pocket, but it's all right. And then they show off the metal bar, which is just a chain link fence. And you apparently need a key in order for you to actually take that off the door and then put it back on. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think like the biggest dilemma with this though is like how do you lock it if you're trying to leave like because this door that we're actually looking at here opens the other way so like if the dude was to open up the door and he sees the bar right there couldn't he just like crouch underneath and go through yeah <laughs> so i mean i don't know maybe i'm just overthinking this let's move on to the next thing here it's a good thing players can keep their eyes open underwater because it's gorgeous that's what it says let's hear what it sounds like with sound That looks pretty good. Goes underwater. A little bit of ambience here and there. Although I'm not sure they have a full swimming animation just yet. Neat. All right, moving on. On the subject of barricades, Nomad has implemented two basic traps for player settlements. The first is a barbed wire trap that can be placed anywhere in a player's base. Players will not be able to craft these, but instead find bundled barbed wire stacks around the map in order to place them. Minor bleeding damage will be applied if a player tries to actively move through the barbed wire, but will not receive damage while standing still. So this is pretty cool but I wonder if these barbed wires could be used for like defenses you know when you're actually like putting up the wall and can you have like barbed wire on like the top of the walls because I'm sure like somebody's gonna try and you know hop over those like I could definitely imagine somebody um using a vehicle and then hopping on the vehicle to get over the wall one deterrent might actually be having barbed wire on the top that's just me well speaking of fences this next one here says the second trap is the electrified fence kit oh oh snap you can <laughs> electrify the fence cool players can construct construct these additions to their fences. It does exactly what you think it does. If players try to cross the fence when it has power, that's actually kind of cool. But I kind of hope that they make it so that you're able to put barbed wire over the top so that people don't just try to hop it when they have vehicles. Cause I can still definitely see people trying to hop the fence. They show off this uh, little electric fence sort of deal. It looks like it's solar powered. That's kind of cool. Curious to know what you actually have to, you know, get to actually make this thing. But I really like the idea. Moving on. Gunschlinger has gotten zombie looting implemented in Time for the closed alpha. Now your uninvited guests will have a little something on them to make it worth your ammo. Assuming you have planned accordingly and there's not a fresh horde on the tails of the first one. So then it shows off this guy just basically looting a lot of stuff here. And it actually looks like they have like quite a bit of stuff. Like I saw one with a, a vest, a really good looking vest on him. So it's, it's definitely pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm like someone who likes to like scavenge a lot. So I definitely search all these bodies for everything. So I can't wait to see what that's like. Moving on. Nihito has been 
I'm working on the not so little details that players will be able to find in the rural areas of the map. Yes, Alberta has quite a few farms and those farms needed equipment to work them before the outbreak. Is there any significance to these or are they just props? It'd be kind of cool if you could just like claim a farm and then you could just like, you know, make a bunch of wheat and stuff and distribute it. Curious. But anyways, let's move on here. Hacks has been working on the R700 animations, such as the magazine variant, reloads and ammo checks. Yeah, I forgot that the Remington had a freaking mag. Quite a cool looking animation though, I'll give him that. Let's move on here. He has also been working with our animators to get single rounded reloading implemented for the revolver. For when players don't have a speed loader handy, this kind of handheld power comes with some time constraint after all. Well, I imagine when you're freaking reloading like that, it's gonna take freaking forever. Like this weapon isn't viable unless you actually have, you know, the speed loader. But anyways, let's move on. On top of that, we've also gotten animations ready for the state staple pistol. I think this is supposed to be the Makarov, right? Yeah. Of the survival games, the Makarov. Yeah, it is Makarov. Cool looking weapon. And as a bonus, the shooting range mentioned in last week's post will also have a shooter's challenge. Area for players to test their accuracy and aiming speed on the dummies. This will be a separate area that players can launch from the main menu. Poor dummies. All right. So overall, that was pretty good. We definitely got some insight on what's going on with the closed alpha here. Yeah, I think that's um, where we're at with that. So yeah, pretty cool. Tell me what your thoughts on that are. Do we want to go back into the previous update? Because I completely missed it. All right. So I just took a look at it. There's a lot of like character creation. It seems as if you can actually have some sort of like loadout, I guess you would call it. Uh, like you can start out as like a firefighter or a doctor or a chef or a farmer and they'll give you specific perks or you could completely like customize the way that you want to be. I'm sure they're going to give you like a limited amount of things that you can do. Kind of reminds me of uh, what was that one game? Um, Project Zomboid. That's what it reminds me of. It's where you basically pick um, an occupation and that occupation basically has its own perks in certain areas and makes them better at certain things that others aren't good at. So that's kind of cool. I'm assuming that you can level these up in game and uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much the main thing here. They also have the locks on the doors which we kind of just shut off from the previous one except they're showing off wood and metal and uh, the way that you can unlock it and stuff. They also have like different types of water cans that you can do to make it better I'm assuming. Showing off some more cosmetics and then showing off the shooting range. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so that was a relatively short one. I think the most interesting thing about it was just the UI, which was pretty nice. A lot of stuff to think about and uh, yeah. So I think that's where I'm gonna cut it. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Dead Matter, be sure to share the video and like the video and comment down below. If you're someone that's new, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.